Well, we have uh, over-rationalized our society. We uh, have pretended there are no mysteries in it. And along with that, the death of mystery goes the death of hope. There is no sense of uh, the future uh, being interesting. It's dull. Uh, and uh, as if I were a young person, I would also be very much uh, disheartened by the attitude in the West these days, where materialism has destroyed the real freedom. I don't mean now pseudo-freedom. Uh, you have plenty of pseudo-freedom, and we have pseudo-freedom here. But the real freedom, which is the freedom of spirit, uh, we have lost this. And with it goes hope. We have also lost hope. And when young people can no longer hope, then what's the purpose of enduring life for the next 60 years? In every lovely line, in every lovely scene, in every piece of beauty, there is a mystery uh, that goes beyond what we can see uh, with our human eyes. And it's very important that we keep the sense of mystery. Otherwise, we, we cut off the outreach. We cut off the vast extent. We cut off the joy of uh, our human existence. Rational minds are only a very small part of our imagination, of our way of seeing life. And the larger, the much larger part, it cannot be measured, is the mystery that reaches beyond the rational explanation. Mystery is the experience in imagination that there is always something beyond where I am. A mystery is when I draw a line on a paper to make a form for a painting. Mystery is in love. Mystery is in a new idea. Mystery is what makes the, my experience of the stars. Surely I can explain the stars, but this does not relate at all to the joy of the mystery of the light of the moon and the stars. There's the mystery below all that we teach in our mathematical courses, in our scientific courses, in our religious courses. And we should help our children to learn the depth of mystery. The basic human dilemma is that the more truth we know externally, the less certitude we have internally. The more we gain scientifically, the more we lose our own souls. The threat of the nuclear holocaust is not so much that the bombs themselves will go off, but that human beings will become so bored with life, so lacking in inner resources, that they think they may as well die anyway. It's a kind of mass suicide. As a social democratic, I am optimistic. I think uh, that it is possible to improve the world. I think the, the present situation is caused by human people, and therefore it would be possible for human, human mm. decisions to be better. Now, this is a problem that I face continuously as a psychoanalyst, mm -hmm. now, how to uh, help people find some hope in a world where they feel there is no hope. Mm. You see, the great battles of uh, history, say like the Greeks when they defeated the, Tur the, the Persians and uh, so on, <coughs> were against great odds when no sane person could have optimism. But they did fight with hope. 
<coughs> and they won, uh, despite that. <coughs> I would hope that we can get across a, a to people the uh, joy of, uh, of doing their best, even though it may not succeed. And in Sweden, these days, I don't have the feeling that there is a challenge that is capable of exciting, of uh, inspiring uh, the people. You've taken the government as a parent, and the parent is too good. And that's the best way to ruin children. If you're going to avoid boredom as an adult, you have to learn to face it as a child. See, uh, the boredom pushes you into your own imagination. And I don't see these children being pushed into their own imagination, because always there are toys there. And to be alone is very important, is essential for the child's creativity, because this makes him ponder, and then he faces his boredom, and then he has to think of other things. And this presses him to use his imagination uh, on a, a deeper level. Now, perfection never develops into creativity. What does develop into creativity uh, is the deeper struggle toward uh, perfection, but not perfection itself. Creativity comes out of the facing of difficulty, and I would even go so far as creativity comes out of the facing of suffering. Joy comes from the meeting of difficulties uh, and the use of one's capacities to face more than he thought or she thought he, they were able to do uh, beforehand. The ultimate goal of life is creativity. The real freedom is the capacity to meet your destiny. And as I understand it in Sweden, the government meets your destiny for you. And so what then do you have to do? Now that with a human being is the most dangerous thing of all because he loses exactly what makes him a human being, namely the capacity to envision new challenges, uh, to have visions of new goals. Uh, and uh, uh, new struggles, new uh, effort, new adventure. Freedom is not something you have. It's something you continuously strive for. And the essence of freedom is not that you achieve it, but that you move toward it. All your lives long, you will be moving toward a greater and greater freedom, the ultimate freedom, which is freedom of the spirit. And this will be a continuous climbing and with more climbing to do in your very last days of life. For me as a social democrat, freedom is first individual freedom, the right to political democracy, the right to vote on the party I would like to vote on, the right to express myself, the right to form political parties, the right to form trade union movements and so on. But, and that's where I differ from my conservative friends in Sweden, I say this is not enough. Because according to my opinion, the economic and social structure of the society also means a lot for the freedom of the individual. An unemployed person, that's not a free person. And here I think we have an important political discussion going on in Sweden now, between what I would say progressive people and more conservative people. Well, I certainly agree, but uh, I'm a psychoanalyst, and we look at it from different points of view, which is very valuable. But the important thing to me about freedom, psychologically, is that it's not a state of being, it's always a struggle. As I think it was Ibsen that put it, uh, I don't want freedom, I want the struggle for freedom. <clears throat> and when people think they have freedom, 
then it's when it's dangerous. Uh, because it generally means that they've settled for some kind of, of subversive power. Freedom always should remain an ideal in, in front of you uh, so that you seek it as a uh, goal rather than something achieved. Even in a small country like Sweden, I think we need a real tough discussion about freedom at least once every tenth year. When Columbus discovered America, uh, he came across mostly on the strength of one man, namely Columbus. Uh, but when the, uh, the solar flights went to the moon, we can't even remember who the people were who walked on the moon. This was a, a great effort of collectivism. Thousands and thousands of people, hundreds of thousands, were involved in the making of these ships to the moon. Now, we cannot avoid this kind of movement toward collectivism. Uh, the organization of man is the man who stops at the collectivism. What the rest of us must do uh, is to avoid the conformity. The organization of man, you see, does what he's told to do. He fits in an organization. Uh, he does not have any individual thoughts. He only uh, can say yes to his boss. He wears the same kind of clothes as everybody else. Uh, he fits in collectivism. But if we stop with him, we are doomed. We must go beyond the collectivism to a community which has, respects the uniqueness of each person. And this is no longer the organizational man. This is the man who thinks his own thoughts, even though he rides on a spaceship that is made by hundreds of thousands of other technicians. He nevertheless looks at the Earth from the moon, and he has his own inner vision of what this Earth is. Perhaps he writes a poem about it. Uh, this is beyond the organizational man to the unique individual who, uh, is, who cherishes his own values aesthetically and morally and who lives and dies by his own values. Utopia is kind of compass. I want to have that to know the direction. And then I know that in reality, when I look, there is mountains where it's maybe it's, it's clever to go around the mountains. So I want to have the compass and I want to have the map to look and, and check about the realities. But without the utopia, maybe I will go into the completely wrong direction. I don't believe in utopias. Mm -hmm. And I think utopia leads to many evils. The effort to make a utopia, I think, is essentially what went wrong in Russia. They are convinced they have the best system and that every other group should have their system of uh, government. And therefore, it is lawful uh, to lie, to, uh, uh, to kill, to have concentration camps. Now, Hitler, in the same way, had a belief in utopia. And in this sense, I think utopia is always, in the long run, destructive. I must be aware that other people have different opinions. And second, it's important, I think, to work with what I would call, in the practical, practical policy, with provisorial utopia, that is, define a step, maybe a short step, towards the more final utopia. To me now, uh, every blade of grass out here and every wave on the ocean has its own mystery about it. It's not a mystery of what causes the wave. I know it's the wind. What it rather is, is my sense of form, the sense of, of poetry that the rhythm of the waves can bring. And this sense of mystery comes from within the person in his relation to life.
the preservation of the idea of mystery, depending as it does on poetry, uh, on uh, art, on the sense of beauty, uh, the, this preservation is absolutely essential to the joy one gets out of life and to the, uh, well, if I may say, the resuscitation of the dead soul of our Western civilization. We thought that if we could just create better material conditions, we would so say, automatically get a better av kulturupplevelser, ett ökat intresse för detta. Och den, där skulle lika starkt finnas en, en kraft i samhällsutvecklingen som skulle driva utvecklingen åt det hållet. Men det är klart att det, det måste vi erkänna att där har, har vi anledning att vara besvikna. No matter in what period one is born, whether it's the Renaissance or the Middle Ages or ancient classical Greece or the modern day, the issue is not uh, what's going to be given to you. But the issue is the degree to which you can respond to the world about you, which you can make, the degree to which you can make your world, the d degree to which you can influence uh, your world. Why is the Western civilization always in such a hurry? Because they are afraid of death, they run to work, they run home, <clears throat> they run for a vacation, and then get bored and run back again to work. And we are afraid of death because we're afraid we never will have lived. The awareness of death is constructive because it helps us to be aware of uh, the limitations, and then within those limitations, we can create, we can enjoy the beauties of the earth. Now, if you are not able to do these things, then you run, hoping always around the next corner there will be some meaning that has uh, escaped you up till now. Att komma i en skogsklänta och plötsligt se ett gult kantarellställe framför, det, det tycker jag höjden av lycka. Well, some people would say maximum of happiness. But that's uh, not uh, enough as an answer. I, I would be more interested to hear Mr. May's answer to that question. He would much better, I think, qualified for that. When I think of the people in America that I know <coughs> that uh, uh, would call themselves happy, uh, they lead very uninteresting lives to me <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and also to themselves. Well, I think joy is much closer to the meaning of life. I think the meaning of life brings joy, but the meaning of life may not bring happiness. So then it must be the responsibility of the politicians to see to it that you have a maximum of possibilities to decide as an individual how you would like to make use of different alternatives. We should not decide what is the good alternative, but, but make it possible to choose among as many alternatives as possible. Well, this is what I would agree with very much. Mm. You cannot make the choices for the individual. Mm. And in this sense, I think uh, joy always involves some choice that you have made, you, uh, and often with other people, uh, with other persons that you may love. <laughs> you see, in the ancient Greek mythology, one of the myths is that Hercules was required to clean the Augean stables. This was, these were stables where there had been 200 cows for 100 years, never been cleaned, impossible to clean. But Hercules thought of changing the course of a river and flowing the river through the stables, and this did clean the stables. Now, when we are against our uh, Augean stables, when we see something it's impossible to do, 
like many people feel, the majority feel in this country, that it's impossible to avoid a nuclear holocaust. Now at that point, uh, they can tap a deeper level in themselves. Uh, oftentimes people don't use their real courage until they are despairing. I think despair is the beginning of the birth of hope.